today we're going to be making cream soap and I mean cream soap from scratch not the whipped with it with the detergents okay so we're gonna be making just soap soap so again I have my deadly deadly cup and we're gonna be because this is a cream soap we are going to be mixing potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide the two. Now, every recipe I read um, uses a quarter of sodium hydroxide and three quarters potassium hydroxide. So I'm using my one of my favorite um, rest, one of my favorite combinations of oils again. And hold up. Uh, again, I'm using rice bran oil, which I've discovered I really, really like. Virgin coconut, cocoa butter, shanna butter, some shortening, and stearic acid. Now, I'm using an extra deep pot for the, um, the oils because stearic acid can cause a more violent reaction and you could end up with volcanoing. So, not when you mix your water and your lyes, but when you add your lye to your uh, your oils. So um, let's just start our measuring. I've already got the oils all heated up. That's all done. And they're cooling and we're going to we'll measure out the potassium sodium hydroxide first. So for my sodium hydroxide, I have 40 grams, 41 grams. Next, we're going to measure out the water, and the water for this one is 1,200 grams. I'm not sure this is going to be a big enough container. I think it's just 600, and then I'll do another one. We'll get another bottle of that. All right, another 600. A spatula. Oh, I want a long one. Yes, this could be violent. You guys are seeing this, right? Yeah. Potassium hydroxide has a tendency to growl at you. Strange. Haven't had a volcano yet, but that growling is really unnerving. <laughs> like a magical potion. I tell you, it always has to tell you. <laughs> 
Look at that. Do you hear that? Isn't that crazy? Um, yeah. All right. So, and we've got our cream soap ingredients. Again, this has rice bran oil, virgin coconut oil, cocoa butter. Ooh, that's really hot. We're going to let this cool down. To All right, here we go. I'm going to slowly add. I'm just get my glasses on again. I'm also going to take a sheet pan. Put it underneath just in case we get some severe volcanoing. I just want to make sure nothing gets all over the floor or, or lost. All right. So we are going to add this water, the lye water. You see how it curdles? That's hysteric acid. enough so that when it starts to uh, get to trace I'm not going to have any problems. I'm tempted to just hand stir it and I will revert to hand stirring if I start having problems. My husband being sore with the kids in the background. I have the best husband ever. <laughs> All sorts of going on downstairs. Oops. All right. same way that I do the foaming bath whip, which is detergent based. We'll see if it works. If this works, this is definitely more economical and um, a little more natural. Definition of natural is a sketchy thing at the best. So look at that. Looking creamy and good. So I'm going to keep watching it until it's nice and cool and then I will go ahead and leave it alone. I think the next thing I'm going to make with potassium hydroxide is my shaving soap. I need, I've, I've got such a pretty, pretty, pretty brand. <laughs> we don't really have much in here for manly men. So I'm thinking maybe some beer soap um, in the summertime and we use some locally made artisan products to make it extra special. I know it. I actually have seen like a, a 
type of soap that kind of smells like WD-40. It's somewhere in my files. Um, if any of you have a copy of my book that I came out about 20 years ago, um, there's recipes for everything. And <laughs> there's so many things that I've forgotten um, how cool they are that we'll just make them new again. And I'll share them with you because um, it's so, so much fun. Soaping is probably my favorite thing in the world to do. And having my own kitchen in which to, to do it with now is ideal. Um, this is gonna be what I do until I can't work anymore. <laughs> I just absolutely love this. And then when I retire, maybe my daughter will find a desire to do this, but you know, she is an aromatherapy guru. She did pick that up from me. And she will be the first person I hire as an actual employee because she's so much like me. It's wonderful. Kind of neat to think that maybe the company would continue to exist for more than one generation. There we go. It doesn't even have to be a wildly successful company. <laughs> Just to pass that knowledge down from one generation to the next is a privilege and a joy. So I'm going to let this cool a bit um, and I'm going to keep my eye on it. It is at oh, about 138, so it's actually cooling down nicely. Um, we'll see what it does. There we go. It's not separating or anything. I'm not wanting it to be super, super, super thick. I'll let it go ahead and do its natural absorption thing. And saponify slowly. Oh, that's a beautiful trace. This is the point where I'd start mixing colors in and putting it into bars. This has got to bled and age, just like the other liquid soaps. <laughs> it changes the whole nature of the beast. Oh, this is beautiful. I just ordered some more potassium hydroxide. I have some more somewhere in the cupboard, but I just don't know where it is, and I don't want to dig through the attic closet. I'd have to move all my daughter's toys. <laughs> I'm so lazy. <laughs> if I get desperate, I'll do that. I'll probably have to do that this summer if we have a really, isn't that a beautiful thing? I also want to do some portrait soap, so I got to get busy making, um, not portrait, but landscapes. So I've got to get busy making some special molds for that, and I bought all the stuff for it. So um, there'll be an episode here on how to make your own molds with Coroplast coming up soon. So you know how to make them out of, oh, this is beautiful. I can't stop stirring it. Usually you're just like, oh, so done. This is fun. Um, usually I make most of my molds for decorative purposes out of silicone, just the caulking. But um, you can also make, I want a tall and skinny. Yeah. This looks, I could just, I could just do a whole video on watching this trace. Talk about an awesome trace. This is the most beautiful trace I think I've ever seen. I wonder if I could spell my name. Look at that, I spelled my name. <laughs> see if I can do my last name now. Although my kids probably couldn't because they don't teach cursive in school anymore. I taught all my kids cursive. Are you kidding me? Cursive's beautiful. I'm starting to worry about some of my fonts that I use that are cursive. The people are not always going to be able to read them. <laughs> 
I don't know. What do you think, guys? Do you write cursive? Are your children learning it in school? Or is it becoming a lost art of the English language? Here in North America, at least. Isn't that gorgeous? That's... I thought it was too thick now. <laughs> That is a beautiful thing. So I'm going to let that cool and we'll come back if anything interesting happens. Keep my eye on it. This is the countertop cream soap method. I'm a liking it. I got to find a big bucket to put this in. Someplace cool is where I'll store it. Well, it does its thing. So I'm going to go find a container for it. And we'll pour it in just in case it goes through a hard phase. And I don't want to be scraping it out of my big bucket. Hold on. Alright, so I've got this ancient Tupperware bowl that's been sanitized. And let me give it another. And uh, I'm going to add it to the staff here in the soapy kitchen. That. Isn't that beautiful? It's like, it reminds me of uh, making taffy. Look at that. It's kind of the consistency and stickiness of um, condensed milk. <laughs> very, very cool. Now this will put away for a few weeks to, uh, to do its aging and maturing so it can be a proper cream soap. Just scrapey, scrapey everything out, every drop. need this pot for other things. <laughs> so as soon as this is nice and cool, I will be covering it and setting it aside. That is a thing of beauty. Oh my goodness. Mm, smells good too. Really, really loving the rice bran oil. All right, so I'm gonna put it like this, just to keep stuff out of it as much as I can. And then I'll cover it with plastic and again with this when I'm ready to uh, seal it and store it away. So we don't want it to lose all its moisture. Yeah, so that's cream soap made from scratch, countertop method. Okay, it's been a few days, and this is our cream soap. Now, this stuff is pretty neat. Um, the cold process is what I used, and it's just this thick pudding. Check it out. Um, it may whip up. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's got to take time to um, to mature and age. Let's take a little bit and test it. Pretty sure it's not quite ready yet. Yeah, no, it's still it's still caustic, so it's not ready. Still saponifying. Isn't that the neatest neatest texture? That. So I'm going to pack this into jars. Now this has got steric acid in it, so it's going to get all shiny and fun. <laughs> so I've got my sterile jars, and I'm just going to take this gloppies and put it in there. 
Um, I thought this bowl was going to work, but it won't. As you see, it was drying out. So just use it. I'm just using my canning jars because this is what I've got. And you use whatever you've got. This made a lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to play with this. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, this is 20, I think it was 25% um, sodium hydroxide and 75% or it was 30, 70 or something. I don't remember. I'd have to look at my notes. I think it was Einstein who said, why memorize if you know where to look it up? <laughs> I like that philosophy. I like that a lot because I really don't have a great, great memory. And I'm going to pack this right up to the top just so I don't end up with a, a problem of um, airspace. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of that anyway, but I don't want a lot of that, so we'll just... It's completely emulsified, which is very cool. It's a little bit of my, um, a little bit of water, I guess, and disinfectant in there, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt it. Add a little preservative to it. There we go. Look at that. This is fun. I can't wait till it's ready. I'll bring you back when it's time to start making things with it. Um, but for now, that's how you do. That's how I do, not how you necessarily do. That's how I make a countertop cream soap. If I go like that, sometimes we need peaches, it gets all the air pockets out. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're gonna get about three quarts. Ooh. It's like taffy. these down and put them in a cool dry place and let them finish saponifying and bletting or curing. <laughs>